So in today's episode, we have Taylor. Taylor is a sex and intimacy coach and a relationship coach. I should have added them all together. But in today's episode, we kind of jumped down, I mean, dove deep into a couple of topics, especially around dating, self-love, a bit about, you know, the culture around sex, which was, it was quite an interesting conversation and I quite enjoyed it and learned a lot myself. And before... And also to make sure you go check out a lot of Taylor's work. She does fantastic work. She does a weekly, say, live on Facebook and having deep conversations about a number of topics and very open, which is cool. So I'll link up all her accounts below too. And before we jump into today's podcast, um, if you do want to support the podcast that little extra bit, um, send us... Uh, for as little as two dollars a month, you can um, support us on Patreon. So it's just Patreon.com/slash/studio-mindfulness, and then that also that two dollars gets you is our a f- access to our Facebook group. So I will do, be doing lives in there once a week or one after every episode, so just day after. So it gives you, you know, we can break it down. So if we'll give you a few other goodies, you get I guess go on the draw to get win free products and all that kind of stuff but yeah so hope you enjoy enjoy today's episode guys thank you welcome. Uh, welcome to the show how are you i'm good how are you i'm good thank you um let's start with i guess we'll start with your journey and see how you i guess because you're just become a relationship coach or been for a while now I want to know, I guess, how that became a part of your life or what kind of drove you down that road. We'll start, like, explain your journey and then we'll get deep in a couple of other things. Yeah, cool. So um, I'm a sex and intimacy coach and I work primarily with couples and inside of relationships and then I'm just expanding at the moment into the world of dating and how to empower people inside of, you know, the current climate in, with online dating and. I really touch on the instant gratification that exists in our culture. Um, So that's what I'm up to, but it's very interesting, my journey. Um, So I'm out to end human trafficking and I put myself in a social media course um, to look at expanding that organisation. And inside of this course, there are a few things that we did and one of them was to organise an event from joy. And we're all sitting around thinking about events for joy and what came up for me was a poetry night and it came from a place of wanting people to be able to be vulnerable without necessarily knowing or without necessarily intentionally being vulnerable because poetry really is a way to express your words but it's almost separate from you. Um, And then what grew out of that was this desire to banish shame from our bedrooms this desire to help people have better sex, to help people be more connected with one another and have more intimacy in all of their relationships. And I really identified that um, that was the other side of the human trafficking coin. So it just, it hurt me to my core that people are being forced into sex slavery. So what I can see at the moment is a way to deal with the demand for sex slaves is to create a space where people don't feel shame around bedroom, the bedroom, um, their fantasies, their sexual preferences, and create a safe space for people to talk about things like femininity, masculinity, sex, um, their fantasies, their likes, their dislikes, and really building a culture of communication. So that's a that's a real good one, eh? Because I do want to touch on the base of I guess because we do seem to depress or I mean suppress like our sexuality. Why do you think that's such a big thing in society, especially currently? Because we got you got one other spectrum that we're not allowed to talk about it or it's shamed upon, and then you got the other end of the spectrum where it's like advertised like everywhere pretty much now. So it's pretty confusing for most people what's going on. Yeah, so I'm just going to be responsible and say, if you're triggered by like woo-woo and crystals and spiritual stuff, yeah, you're not going (laughs) to like what I'm about to say. But um, 
I'll, I'll explain it. I'll, I'll say it in my terms and then I'll explain it. So basically, I think that the sacred has been separated from the sexual. And what that looks like is sex is an instant gratification. You know, in every capital city in the world, you can get sex any time of the day with anybody, no attachment, nothing. That's not just prostitution, that's dating apps now as well. So there's this real separation of the sacred nature of sex, the connection with the other human being. And I can see a few sources of that, you know, there's a lot of that in religion. There's a lot of shame around sex outside of certain types of um, relationships, i.e. marriage, you know, there's lots of ideas around what that should look like. And as much as we're embracing the LGBTIQ plus community, we're um, embracing, you know, different types of love in some parts of our culture, in some parts of the world, in some parts of our cities, a lot of it is still that traditional religious and cultural ways that the world should be. So that's really what I'm seeing is this separation of the connection with the other human being. It's no longer two humans coming together. It's gratification. It's instant pleasure. It's, you know, a release. Maybe it's you had a bad day at work, so you hit someone up on Tinder and you have a booty call or, you know, just that instant release to shift how you're feeling. I suppose. Yeah, it's definitely a massive one with instant gratification. And like, I had a friend say this on my podcast, Jack, and he says that with, especially in the male culture, it's coming to the point that it's pretty much like another drug. And it's hard to have that intimacy moment when I guess the thing on your brain is get that dopamine hit from the, I guess, from having sex or some kind of, you know, get into other online kind of stuff. But we come so driven to, I guess, to escape our reality that we'll find any type of pleasure to escape it. Yeah, any, um, any hit, you know. We wake up, we have our coffee, we go to work, we do whatever, you know, we go home, we can't wait for, like, the end of the day to go and have a beer or a drink or whatever, you know. There's so much drug abuse, drug use um, in young people, you know, young adolescents, um, escaping the world that we live in. And sex has become just like that. And, and get on touch base. So have relationships, I've noticed too. It's great, especially with the online world, because it's such an, in, I mean, it's a gratification world that you can swipe right and you're kind of like the next stud. You can... You know, you move on to, I guess, when one relationship, you feel like it's not working, you don't build behind it, you build, you go straight to the next one and jump on the next app. And this is the kind of thing that I was listening and to. there's options. Mm, I think the it's... options are there. There's no longer like, oh, well, we'll talk about it. It's like, oh, next. Mm. I've got three guys sliding into my DMs. I'm not going to put up with this nonsense. Mm. And it's, that's it, we got, we're, for the human, in the way that we're programmed and that, we have way too many options now, especially with every, everything. As soon as something doesn't feel right, we want to move on to the next thing. And it's not good for the way our brains are programmed and stuff, because we are still, I guess, programmed for like, you know, 100, 200 years ago. Our brains aren't used to this instant gratification. No, and I guess also we're looking for the right one based on all of these ideals that social media and Hollywood and magazines and all of those things have given us. We can see, I was talking today um, with my partner, you know, my news feed is full of engagements and babies and, you know, date nights and flowers and no one posts, oh, he yelled at me and I'm crying. They post, oh, look, he brought me flowers. So we have these ideals of what our relationship should look like. And it's only the good things. It's only the holidays. It's only the romantic gestures. It's the jewelry, the presents, the he bought a new car. Not that he's saved up for 10 and a half years and he's bought his new car or he's worked really hard and, you know, got that promotion. So we bought a new car or it's, oh, look, a new car today. 
uh, is hundred percent it. And I was listening to a video, and they stated that this and there's like four stages of a relationship. So you got your, you know, sexual uh, sexual attraction, and then most people get to about romantic stage. And as soon as that romantic bit is ended, and you start getting to the third stage, which is the hardest stage, where you start going through all your shit, where you start growing, it's most people leave the after the romantic stage is dead. And they go into the next one and then you get into the honeymoon stage and then you're on to the next relationship and continuously keep thinking that relationships are about the romantic bit. But the one thing I've learned, especially in life, it's about growth. Relationship is about growth. It's here to teach you things about you, about yourself that you don't generally like about yourself and vice versa. Oh yeah, I am learning so much about myself right now. Um, but, you know, we've all been there. I've broken up with guys when it got hard. I've broken up because, you know, they had mental health issues and I didn't know how to deal with that. I broke up with a guy once because I wanted to travel the world and he had diabetes. And the thought that he didn't know if he could go to China with me because he had to check if he could get insulin. I was like, this is too much for me to deal with. I just need to be able to go whenever I want. I can't deal with that. That's slowing me down. Yeah. You know, we've all been there and it is about learning that there's more than that and that the romance doesn't keep you together long term. It's great. I had a conversation with my partner last night about bringing a little bit more romance back into our relationship. But it is those moments when I'm confronted and he's there for me. I was talking to him today about, you know, starting my own business is hard and I've just taken on study as well. And I was like, maybe I should just get a job. And I was like, I don't want one, but am I cut out for this? And he's like, it's worth it. I don't want you to get a job. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, he believes in me. And then, you know, a few, a few minutes later, I was like, thank you for believing in me when I don't. And it's such, such a powerful thing. And so that, that is something we genuinely need in relationship is that we need to know, we'll just probably jump a little bit topic, but I'll go back down, is that we need to know each other's core values. And then it's easier when you get, say, with what's happening then, it's easier to support each other in knowing, I guess, what each other's strengths and weaknesses are. And as you, I guess, go further along in the relationship, it is something that you learn as well. 100%. Yeah, and my partner and I, um, our values really align. And that actually looks like, you know, not having the financial pressure of like that I, that he expects me to earn a certain amount of money. He wants me to build a business that I love. There's been quite a bit of time since we met. I'd just moved home and I was looking for a job and trying to work out what I was doing where I was unemployed for like six months of our relationship because I was, I went and studied this and I didn't like that. So now I'm doing this other thing and um, I was looking for work and then now then COVID hit and I lost that job. And I was like, he doesn't care where I work or what he tells people I do or how much money is in my bank account. He wants me to have a job that I love. And if that looks like starting my own business and that looks like the stress that's going on at the moment, he's happy with that. And that's so powerful to is like help to guess your partner to become happy and grow as a person and then support each other on the both of the ways. I guess what is so I guess one I'm trying to think how to word this is um how do you start creating I guess this growthful or a lot of growing in relationships or what would the pillars be that you think? So I think it really starts with picking the right partner for you. We might even do a big loop back around that way, if you don't mind. But it's, it's picking a partner that works for you. I was in a relationship and it didn't work for us to be together. Now, I, I still love this man. I'm not in love with that man anymore. I moved out and I said, I can't be in a relationship and love you because I expect a partner to have these things. And I went on this journey to find myself. I broke up with him and I was like, I don't know what I do for me. I know I do this to be a good girlfriend and I know I do this to make my dad proud because that's the childhood stuff still there. You know, I'm a good daughter if I do this stuff and all the 
good girlfriend and a good all of this. And I was like, what do I do because I like it? What do I do because I, for me, what do I do that's me? So I went out and I started trying new things, doing the things I love. I had one thing that I did that I knew I loved for me, and that was soccer. And everything else, I laid on the couch, I tell people, I put on six kilos in eight weeks. I laid on the couch and I watched rom-com on YouTube, not even Netflix, on YouTube, like Hallmark rom-coms or something. They're like the sappiest, most ridiculous rom-coms. And I ate a bag of potato chips and a block of chocolate every night because I knew I liked doing those things. I was like, I don't know if I like going to the gym. I don't know if I like doing this. I don't know if I like doing that. And slowly I started doing things and I filled my life up with all these awesome things that I did. And I moved back to Queensland and I'm near my mom because I knew I love being near my mom. Started, you know, making friends that did all of these things. And then I was like, I don't even know if I have time for a boyfriend. And then I met this man and I couldn't get over all the things he liked to do with things I like to do. He was passionate about things that I didn't know anything about. And he let me go and do and encouraged me to do the things that I was passionate about that he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so that's really the first, that's the foundation. Knowing nice. yourself and picking someone that fits for you in your life. That is so powerful because it's, it comes down, you've got to be happy with yourself. You've got to have your cup, say, almost full, you know, past the halfway point. So then when someone starts filling into that cup, at least it's not, you know, it's not an empty cup. And this is something that I learned in my rela last relationship too, is that you can't, if, you can't fill someone else's cup if it's empty. And we both went into this relationship with empty cups. So a lot of insecurities, I had a lot of mental health issues too. And it was just a recipe for disaster. And both of us weren't happy with ourselves to be straight up with thing. And then it made me go on the journey of finding myself and creating the person that I wanted to be and bring up happiness too. And another thing I really like that you pointed out, which I'm going to say a bit differently, is having two separate lives. I think that's important because then it comes back and it still it creates, I guess conversation in the relationship and creates growth because and then you're always learning about each other too which is a vital thing I think is so important yeah it is really important to have your thing and I I think of it from the perspective of having broken up with people and had I, I was in a relationship and I didn't have a lot of friends I'd moved into state and not long after I moved there I met this guy and we moved in together pretty quickly and I didn't have a lot of things that I did and I didn't have a lot of friends and we broke up and I was like, I don't know who to call. And it's that I don't want my life to ever feel like that. So it, I, I made my life really busy and sometimes he has to come to things that he's not really that interested in if he wants to spend time with me and vice versa. And sometimes we see each other for a workout and dinner. And then other weekends, we spend all weekends together. Was that so important? Um, we'll jump on to one more pillar and then I'll ask another question. But what would you say would be like pillar number two or the second most important thing? Oh, communication. 100%. <laughs> I think that's so vital. Because um, I think they did a research. I a study on it and that's the most common thing people break up over is the lack of communication and it's weird that we kind of you know we hide stuff away because we think we're going to offend people and it kind of realizes that we're not respecting our boundaries and then we're making ourselves unhappy too by not communicating how we feel and then we start resenting our partner in the long run yeah you've got to ask for what you want and be okay with hearing no but ask and get really clear why you want it. And one of the things that I'm learning at the moment is not to like make the demand, like if you don't do this, but actually go to them and say, this is why I want this thing and can you give it to me? And get vulnerable, don't make a demand. I do this all the time. My boyfriend was telling me today, he's like, you like 
throw it in my face and then you get vulnerable, but you've thrown it in my face and I'm triggered. I'm like, oh, I didn't even see that I did that. Yeah, it's definitely like something we all do. It's like we don't realize that we're demanding instead of like putting the offers up too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and then to come back with to boundaries and that, how would you say, how would you start like communicating your boundaries to your partner or the best kind of way and so forth? Right from the get-go. So I've been seeing my partner for like known him for 15 months, 16 months. We've been dating since January, but our first date was last May and we matched online and he knew before we went on that date that you, you messaged me the next day. That is, that is my expectation. And I was like, and if we have sex, you stay the night. I don't care if, it, if I'm never going to see you again. And I make it really clear, really clear from before even our first date, this is what I expect and this is how I expect to be treated. Yes, show up in authenticity, which is so important, being your true self on the first day. I guess with the jump a little bit or continue to play with that a little bit, how would you say you would sh to be people that... I guess, not confident in themselves, how would you show up to be your true self in the first date or the first couple of dates? I guess trying to ease so, into it. Okay. You're never 100% confident in yourself. I mean, just start there. But if you can't ask for what you want, stop dating. Commit to a time frame. Pick three weeks, three months. I picked six months. Stick to a time frame, say, I'm not dating and I am going to work on myself. I'm going to love myself. Don't try and act confident or fake it till you make it or, you know, there's no, these steps are going to work. You need to go and do the work to love yourself. Go and be alone with yourself. Even, you know, reach out to your best friends and just message them. Why do you love me? Even if you have to do it every day for six months, do it. Mm. And start building that up. I, this is another thing too. It's, um, it's, not, it's not the way that I heard it, but it's, it was more to do with money. It's like write down 500 things I guess you love about yourself too because then it starts rewriting your brain on how you think about yourself, which I think that's so important. Yeah, sleep naked. Yeah, <laughs> get confident. And there's another thing I heard too. It's um, it's a pretty hard one. It's like you look yourself, I guess, naked in the mirror and like, you know, you start saying you love yourself and try and say it confidently and start building behind there. So I heard one, um, stand in front of the mirror naked and pick one thing that you like about yourself and do that every single day. Just one thing that you like and focus on that and then go back the next day and go back the next day. And yeah, I've got quite a few practices. Um, I run a feminine sexual prowess, one-on-one -on -one, 10 week program. And one of the things I, I say is go and throw out all the clothes that don't fit. Now, I don't know if this is applicable to men or not, but I know there are a lot of women that have outfits they used to fit into that someday one day will and it's never going to happen because there's shame and guilt that it doesn't fit and we're beating ourselves up that we're not as skinny as we used to be or we're not as whatever. Go and throw that out and go and buy yourself something that makes you feel fabulous. I think it can go both ways for men too because I guess as much as we don't like to talk about it, it's a kind of a thing that's in the secret is that we do get ashamed for, you know, getting put in that few extra kilos on, not fitting those jeans anymore, or not fitting that shirt that we used to like. And we, and I do see plenty of other people too that I guess start hoarding stuff and then one day I'm going to get like, you know, I'm going to go to gym and start getting ripped and so, and 
I guess it can be a bit of a motivation, a motivator, sorry. But at the end of the day, is it's just wasted space. And it's, if it's quite... coming from shame and guilt, it's not a motivator. We need to stop looking at this like carrot and stick motivational method around our weight and around our mindset and just give that up and just be happy with you and exactly where you are today. I do a lot of yoga and it is all about exactly where you are today and just being with where you are. Sure, you have a goal and you set out to be there, but be okay with right now. And there's nothing wrong with you. Sure, you put on an extra two kilos. Maybe you put on an extra 25 kilos. You're beautiful. Go and buy something that fucking fits. Oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Go and buy something that fits and makes you feel phenomenal. Whether you're a guy or a girl, go and do it and wear it and strive. Learn, love. And then go on some dates. 100% and it's it's I guess it's such a long process too starting guess to love yourself so I guess my next question would be is guess after a breakup how do you start rebuilding yourself back into the dating scene and how would you start and make it a two question two part question how would you start self love again grieve Mm. let it out yell and scream and dance and cry and maybe you need to go to a boxing gym and hit a boxing bag 1700 times feel all of it if you can communicate it without it being toxic have a conversation so my ex-partner and i we're still i wouldn't say friends we don't catch up all the time but there is no animosity there there is no there's nothing there in our space we can talk he came and saw me he was in Queensland because we went out in Sydney he was in Queensland and he's like I just walked past your mum's house and I was like actually she doesn't live there anymore but I do and we hung out till 1am just sitting on my couch chatting you know and got really present to how much love had been in our relationship and really complete that it was over. And really okay that we're not angry at each other and there's nothing wrong with him. You know, he's not some asshole, dickhead, whatever, because he's not my boyfriend anymore. He's a human that I loved very much and lived with and had a relationship with and it didn't work out. And we kind of forget those moments too in a relationship, especially when we start resenting our ex-partner, is that we did love them at one stage. They were our world kind of thing. And then we get to the stage where we're going through that grieving process that we start hating on them when actually they just weren't the right fit for us. And that's not to say that if you're on the, I don't know the grieving cycle, but if you're on that stage and you hate them, hate them. Tell your girlfriend or your guy, you may know, but someone you trust. You're like, I need a I hate so and so party. I have a friend who trashed her wedding dress. That is such like a cool thing because we get I probably like a bit bat flipped on my what I was just said before is that we suppressed all our emotions so much, and this is something I did. A lot and then I hit a stage that was six months down the track and I just fucking broke I didn't know who I was and I was trying to process this grieving process because I didn't go through the emotions I was trying to and this is a masculine thing a masculine trait is that you're trying to suppress it you're trying to look look how good I'm doing right now and so forth and then you kind of hit that stage that you break and you're like it's six months down the track why am I broken like why have why I'm still feeling these feelings about this relationship and it's normally because you haven't processed it at all and sometimes it just takes that long mm. I was totally okay with my breakup until he got a new girlfriend and then I lost my shit like psycho ex-girlfriend 
to the max. Like the kind of psycho ex-girlfriend that movies are made about. But it was just what was there for me. It was the feelings I had. There was betrayal there because I saw images of him with the new girlfriend doing things he refused to do with me. But instead of, you know, communicating, I'm really angry at you at the moment. I stuffed it down and then I drank a bottle of $5 red wine and the top blew off and out came this psycho crazy bitch because I caged her in instead of just being like, yeah, you're a dick. You wouldn't do that thing with me and now you're doing it with her and I don't like that very much. Would have been a lot simpler to do that. Maybe I would have cried for 10 minutes, but instead I lost my shit later on. And it's something that I guess we all do. And I think my biggest thing out of my like last relationship is how much I grew as a person coming out of it and looking back and putting the dots together, I would not be in the position I am in now is where I'm getting, I guess, do opportunities like this with a podcast and stuff like that, that I wouldn't have went out and done this at all if it wasn't for, I guess, that pain of that breakup. Yeah, 100%. We are only where we are right now because of everything that's happened to us up until right now. So if you start regretting and blaming and, you know, making things in your past wrong, you don't get to be present and happy in this moment. And you also, if this moment isn't great, you don't get to be powerful and deal with it because you're caught up in why it shouldn't be this way instead of just, well, it is, and I'm not okay with that. And what do I want it to be like instead? And then take those actions. That's 100% true. Um, we'll wrap it up on this question, but what is the legacy you want to create? I, okay, it's a big one. It's um, reconnecting with our sacred sexuality and it's to impact the lives of 90 million humans and bring the sacred being back into our bedroom. Yeah, that is powerful. Because we can always one. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on, though. It was good You're having so you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Cheers for watching today's episode today, guys. I want to give a massive shout out to Conscious Community Brisbane. Make sure you go check out their Facebook page and Instagram page for me. Um, give us a like if you liked today's episode, guys. Uh, tell us what you think in the comments below or send us a me a DM. And if you think a friend will get a lot of value out of this episode, share it with them. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a good one, guys.